Hello, my name is Rubika. I study veterinary medicine in Sofia and I will talk to you about how university life is in Sofia. Hi, I'm Driti. I'm from India and I'm currently a second year student in veterinary medicine in Sofia. The university is located in Studenski Grad, a neighborhood uh, just a bit outside the center in Sofia. Uh, it's in Studenski Grad. There's actually uh, three separate buildings that make up the university. Two of them are in Studenski Grad, and another one is just a bit outside. It's 30 minutes away from the main building. First year, uh, your lectures will be all in Building A and Building D, which are both in uh, Studenski Grad. But uh, in second year, you'll start having lessons in Building C. They have just built a building right next to Building D, which is so close and so much more convenient. But we're not sure when it will reopen. It's supposed to be the new Building C. But for now, Building C is just a bit outside of Studenski. And uh, lectures take place in all three buildings and as well as practices. It really depends which subjects uh, they are. Our lessons are divided in lectures and practicals. Um, practices are compulsory and you're expected to attend them. Lectures aren't compulsory, but mm, there are professors which check who is there and keep attendance. And it is a bonus if you do attend them and it does help you in the final exam to attend your lectures. In the lecture halls, there's everyone. And in the practices, we're divided into smaller groups, A, B, and C, or depending how many there are. And maximum is usually 10 people per group. The, the nationalities, we have Greeks. We have a lot of Greeks and Cypriots. And um, there's Indians, Iranians, and Italians. COVID-19 uh, had the greatest effect last year, as we were for the most of the year online but this year we did just the first semester online and now we resumed in presence we still have to wear a mask during lessons the green certificate where it states that it, you're vaccinated or that you've done a, a rapid test was compulsory but now they removed this and we just have to wear a mask in, during our lessons Practicals for sure you need lab coats. There are many small shops around that sell lab coats as well as booths. If you might if you're going to a farm, you might need them as well. Each lecture is usually two hours long. Some can be three, but they usually end around the two hour point. Uh, we usually have um, notebooks. We take notes during class, not on our laptop. And um, it helps to study before class, at least a little overview, a little revision of what you did last time, or a little related to what they're going to teach today. It helps the information uh, stick better. Uh, lectures aren't recorded, but usually after class, they sent us the whole presentation that we did during the class. I'm a student from second year. Uh, in uh, first year, the practical side is more in the anatomy lab and regarding anatomy. And starting from second year, you start visiting the farm uh, to observe the animals. Regarding internship, the university doesn't really help or provide with uh, experience, so you'll have to go out yourself and search. There are a lot of clinics, especially in Studenski Grad, which are very open to students wanting to gain more experience and will be very supportive and let you in open arms. The farms are, there's one in outside of Sofia, almost a two hour bus ride, and then one closer to us, which we haven't visited yet, but it's much closer. The professors organize a bus for all the students. You pay two lev and all together we go visit the farm, spend one hour there and come back to do the rest of your lessons. In the one we visited so far, there are uh, cows and horses and a lot of stray dogs, uh, but mostly they are cow farms. So the main animals that we study over the course are um, domestic animals. Um, farm animals, uh, pigs, cattle, horses, and um, cats and dogs. These are the main. One thing I didn't expect is how much these animals differed from each other and how much they were similar to each other. Um, they, all of them being mammals, they're very similar, but they have these very 
important to them but very small differences in their muscles in the way in how many arteries or how many vessels they have the academic year is divided into two semesters the first one starting in september and ending near christmas time start um, end of december start of the middle of december and the second one starts again in the new year and ends usually around May and then you have the exam session in June the whole month and there are some exams at the start of July but all the subjects and professors give at least two dates for the exams so you can organize yourself well and decide which exams you want to maybe give first or towards the end because you want to study more for them. For the exams it varies from subject to subject but for all of them you will have to pass a practical part to then be able to go do the theoretical part. Um, there are cases in some subjects that if you get an exemption grade in your practice and then don't pass your theoretical, the next time you reset the exam, you won't have to do the practice again, which is a bonus. Every subject usually gives you colloquiums throughout the semester. Every few weeks you have a test about what you studied in the previous weeks just so the professor can confirm that you can sit the exam at the end of the semester. All exams are at the end of both semesters and then resets for the summer exams are in September and resets for the winter exams are usually during the semester. It's not for sure that there are oral exams but some professors tend to test you orally to maybe let's say you are missing two points for the passing grade, so they will test you really quickly just to see that you can pass. You can retake an exam as many times as possible, but after the first time that you retake it, you'll have to start paying 15 lev. Uh, the grades in Bulgaria are from two to six, two being a fail, six an excellent uh, result, and three is your passing grade. Usually uh, the professors, after, straight after you do the exam, will sign your booklet and write your grade in your booklet. Or if you do colloquiums, maybe the next lesson they will give you your test back with your grade on it. The booklet, or most famously known as Kanishka, is uh, the, our student booklet where we keep record of all our grades and from our final exams and the signatures of the professors confirming that we passed that semester. At the start of every uh, subject, new subject, the professors will always give you a list of recommendations on books, which you can get by yourself. Or there are from online, Amazon, usually a lot of students get used ones. Or uh, professors will, there are certain professors which provide you with a book with, and they give you a price that you pay and then they will bring back uh, a book. Professors will always be very uh, open and make sure that you understand that you can ask them anything. After a lecture, you can, if you have any questions, you can usually ask them directly right after the lecture. Or if it comes up, if the question comes up a bit later, you can email them anytime they answer. Um, or you can just ask them the next class. They usually have a little space before they start the lecture if you have any questions from the previous class. So each group within the course has their own group email. So they usually get lectures sent to these emails or if professors need anything they need to convey to the students, it's usually done through this. During the week, uh, free time is a bit of a treasure because of all your lessons and then you always come back tired, especially from days which might start at six in the morning and end at six at night. Uh, but there's always free time in the weekend. There are no lessons during the weekend. Sometimes if you're lucky, actually, for once I was in this position in second semester of first year, we had no lessons on Friday. So we had a three uh, lo day long weekend, which was perfect. In my free time, I usually go to the center or sometimes stay around Studentski. There's many sport complexes in Studentski with swimming pools and climbing gyms. As one of the subjects, 
Bulgarian is compulsory for your first two years and that helps a lot especially on reading Cyrillic which is very helpful because it does help you as everything is written in Cyr Cyrillic. Um, advice just follow your Bulgarian lessons. There are some good teachers at the uh, university which are very good and helpful in learning Bulgarian. I think it's very important for everyone who is actually studying in Bulgaria to have a basis in Bulgarian because it does help you from day to day life but also for the potential which is what the university is working towards uh, the possibility of you working in clinics here and it would be very useful for you to even know just the basic words and to be able to understand your patients or the owners of your patients. Yes, it can happen that you find the person who speaks no, no English when you really need something, but through Google Translate, everything is always figured out. In Bulgarian, we learn the basics of everything that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, something that might help you on the street. Um, the, one of the main things is to read the language because we come from different places with very different scripts. So Cyrillic, learning Cyrillic is very important. Uh, I think you just have to keep repeating yourself. You can't miss a, like, a day or a week. You, you have to keep repeating, otherwise you just forget everything that you did before. I think most people would already have it who are in the subject, they already have it, is actual interest in the subject, not just in animals, because there are lots who love animals, but find it really hard to get through the whole vet med course. You need to actually love biology, chemistry, whatever, and need to understand what you're doing. I think uh, an important skill for veterinary medicine is patience. Uh, patients regarding everything, your patients, um, your actual physical patients, patients for your patients, um, but also patients for you because it, you are going to find it hard and you are going to be put in positions where you want to give up and you don't want to study and you want to procrastinate all that you can. But just patience and persistence is very important, I think, especially for this field and all other medical fields. I think just enjoy uh, in the period before high, between if you're going right after high school, in the period between high school and uni, I think you should just enjoy yourself because you're going to learn basics from the scratch again. So it's, there's not really any need to go over anything or stress yourself about it. Studying abroad has always been fascinating to me because of just the generally the new experiences, the new people that I meet, um, just the different way of life and especially living alone, like without any family or extended family. Yeah, and especially in Europe because it's such a beautiful place. I think one of the things that is the hardest is managing money because back home you don't really think about that with your parents because they're usually the one taking care of everything. But here when you're on your own and thinking about your expenses and how much you have, how much you have to budget yourself and how much you have to like control yourself with temptations is a bit hard. I hope you like this video. Uh, you'll find other helpful videos relating to veterinary medicine in the description below. I hope you found this video useful and looking forward to seeing you in Sofia. Mm -hmm.